Hello everyone and welcome to the very first battle of the App Frameworks, where I will demonstrate how to create different applications with different frameworks and then you get to decide who wins. So today we will create a simple greeting app with Flask, which is not exactly a Python framework, but since so many of you guys have requested it, how can I refuse? And before we move on, here's a quick overview of Flask. Now, Flask is using a programming language called HTML to create the structure of a web page. Then it is using a language called CSS to style this structure and to make it look much prettier. Additionally, it is also using JavaScript to interact with different elements on the page. And then lastly, it is using Python to communicate with the web server, also known as backend. So Python then is only a tiny fraction of Flask, which means that in this tutorial, we will learn some basic HTML, basic CSS. We will, of course, learn how to connect them to Python, and we will also publish our application to the web by using a free service called Heroku. And we will begin by creating a new directory for our application. We will call it say hello in camel case. And inside, we will create two additional folders. The first folder is called templates. And this is where we will store all our HTML files. And we will create an additional folder called static with another folder called CSS inside it. And as you guys may guess, this is where we will store our CSS files, also known as style sheets. Now, traditionally, we begin with the HTML. So we will navigate to the templates folder and we will copy this URL from our file system. We will then open our code editor. And this time, surprise, surprise, I'm using Sublime. And then we can save this untitled file in the exact same directory we just copied. Now, it looks like I'm already there. So we will call this file index.html. To indicate that this file contains HTML, we will set the doc type to HTML. Of course, we can then open an HTML tag and we will place a head tag inside it. Now, inside the head tag is where we store data about the file, also known as metadata. So for example, we can store our title in here. In our case, that would be say, hello, we can also select a character encoding with meta car set as in character set and we will set it to utf8 and if you guys are not quite familiar with encoding utf8 is 8-bit unicode where unicode is a format that includes all the languages in the world so it makes a lot of sense to use it next we will move on to the content of our page which we include inside a body tag now, the first element I would like to have is a logo, which we can easily add with an image tag where we need to specify a source attribute or an SRC attribute. Now, in my case, I will use the exact same logo that I've used in my Kiwi app. You can simply copy it from my GitHub. So we will just press on the right mouse button. We will open this image in a new tab and we will copy the URL and paste it inside our SRC attribute. We will then add a line break with BR, which will place the rest of our elements below the image rather than beside it. And then we can go ahead and create our form. Now, this form has an action attribute, which represents where we'd like to store the data we collect from the user. Now, in my case, I will store it in a variable called greet, and we will then remember this value and use it inside our Python file. Now, another attribute our form has is a method, which we will set to post because we are basically sending data to the server rather than fetching it. If we wanted to fetch some data, we would set it to get. And we will, of course, need a closing tag for this form. And we will first begin with a paragraph element. Now, in order to create a paragraph, we will simply create a P tag where the text of this paragraph would be, what's your name? 
we will then include an additional line break with br and we can then collect some input from the user by using an input tag. The first attribute we will take care of is the type of data we are looking to collect. Since we are looking for a name, the type would be text. And additionally, we will also name this input and we will call it name underscore input. Now, input tags in HTML do not need a closing tag. So we can simply move on to another line break and then we will include the last element on our page, which is the button. Now, even though HTML has a tag called button, we do not use this tag inside forms. So the way to create buttons inside a form is with an input tag without the typo, with the type of submit, and we will then also include the text of this button with value equals greet. And then additionally, we will also set an ID attribute to this button, which we will set to greet as well. This little step will make it much easier for us to select this button in order to style it inside our CSS. And okay, it looks like we are done with our HTML file. Everything looks great. We will then save this file. We will navigate to our root folder, actually the templates folder, where we see this file, where you can find our logo, our paragraph, our input field, and lastly, our button. Now my plan is to collect whatever input the user provides and as they click on the greet button, we will replace the paragraph text with something like, hello Maria, it's great to see ya. For this, we will create a new file by clicking on this tiny plus button and we will save it inside our root folder and we will call it app.py and we will begin with the imports. So from Flask, we will import flask with a capital F. And we will also import render template as well as request. And lastly, flash. To initialize our application, we will type app equals flask, which takes in our main module represented by name. And what this command does is it creates a class for our app. Now, it's not a very traditional way to do so, but it still counts. Next, we will select a route for this app. So we will type at app.route, which in my case would be slash hello. And then this slash hello will represent the last part of our URL. For example, myurl.com slash hello. Now we will need to associate this route with a function. So right underneath, we will define a brand new function called index. And at first, we are only going to display our HTML template. Now to do this, we will type return render template, which in our case would be index.html. And since we have saved this file inside the appropriate templates folder, Flask will be able to find it with no issues. So let's go ahead and save this file. We will then navigate to our terminal, in my case, Anaconda, where we will first activate our virtual environment with Conda, activate, in my case, env39. Now I have already installed Flask inside this environment. If you haven't, this is a perfect time to do so. I'm gonna include the commands in the description. And once we have Flask installed, we will simply navigate to our root folder and then we can type flask run. We will then copy this address with control C. We will open our browser. We will paste this address and we will add the hello extension to it. Now we will press enter and here's our HTML template, which we are accessing through Flask rather than through our file system. And if you guys are encountering an error saying you're using a production environment while you should be using a development environment, don't worry, I'm including the debugging commands in the description as well. Next, we would like to make the text of this paragraph adjustable. For this, Flask provides something called flashing messages. And we can easily do this by specifying a set of curly brackets, 
with an additional set of percentages, and these symbols allow us to communicate with our Python file. This is part of the templating language of Flask. So inside these sets, we will type for message in get flashed messages. We would like to create a paragraph element with the message inside it. And then right after, we will open another set of curly brackets and percentage symbols where we will end this for loop. We will save this file and we will move on to our app.py file where we will set the initial text of our message with flash that includes a message of what's your name. Let's save this file and perfect. We still have our message appearing, even though it is nowhere to be found in our HTML file. Now let's go ahead and set a different text to this message, which will follow a click event on the greet button. Now, in case you guys have encountered an error saying that you must select a secret key, we can very easily set this key with app.secret underscore key which we will set to some kind of a password. It doesn't really matter. We can then save this file. And if you refresh the page, everything should work now. Now, in order to display a different message, as soon as we press on the submit button, we will create a brand new route. We will call this route greet. And since this time we are interacting with the server, we will also need to specify the methods of our interaction. Now, in my case, I will select both post and get, even though simply specifying post will do the trick. And then we can go ahead and connect a function to this route. Now, in my case, or in our case, we will call this function greet. And we can then fetch the input we have collected from the user with request.form where inside the square brackets, we indicate the name of our input. In our case, that would be name underscore input. So if we return to our HTML document, that must match this field that my head is partially blocking. So name input is matching name input. And then our brand new flashing message would be flash with hi plus the string instance of our user input, and then we can concatenate a comma as well as great to see you. And then lastly, since we are using the exact same index HTML template we used earlier, we will simply copy the return statement from our previous route and we will place it underneath our new flashing message. We will then save this file and we will navigate back to our browser. And actually, it's safer to rerun our Flask application first. So we will press on Control C twice, and we will rerun this app by pressing the up arrow, and we will hit Enter. Now we can refresh this page. We will enter our name in the input, and we will press on Greet. Boom! Our app is 100% functional. Now let's make it pretty. For this, we will create a new file and we will save it inside our static folder, inside our CSS folder, and we will call this file main.css. And we will begin by targeting the body of our page and we will set the background color to a value of slate gray. We will also align all the elements to the center with text align center. Let's save this file and let's go back to our HTML and connect it. We can link our files inside the head tag with the help of the link tag, where we will use the rel attribute to specify that we are linking a CSS style sheet. And then we will use the href attribute to specify the location of this file. Now, the way to do this with Flask is to first open a set of curly brackets where we select a URL for our static directory without the typo, where the file name equals to CSS slash main.css, 
we will then close our round brackets and additionally, we will also close our double set of curly brackets. Let's go ahead and save this file. And we will, of course, refresh this page and make sure you are refreshing the hello route instead of the greet route. Once you do it, you'll see that all your elements are centered now and our background color is gray. Perfect. Now let's keep on styling. And we will begin by styling our paragraph. Now, in my case, I would like to set the color to white. I would like to set the font to shanty, the size to 1.2 EM. And additionally, I would also like to set a margin of 20 pixels all the way around. Cool. So we can move on to the image element where I'll be much more specific about my margin. So my top margin would be 60 pixels, both our side margins would be zero, and then our bottom margin would be 30. Now, additionally, I would also like to make my image slightly smaller. So we will select a width of 250 pixels. Cool, let's move on with the inputs. We will give it a width of 300 pixels, as well as a height of 50 pixels. Then we can set the margin to 20 pixels and we will remove whichever default border our browser provides us with border equals none. Now I would like this input field to have rounded corners. For this, I will type border radius and let's set it to a radius of 10 pixels. Now the text we type inside this input field would have the font of Shanti as well. We will align it to the center with text align center. And then lastly, we will set the size to something slightly larger than our paragraph, so 1.3 EM. Now we will also like to add some special styling to our greet button. For this, we will select the ID we gave to it with a hashtag greet, as the ID was greet. And we will then set a background color of pale violet red. We will then set the font color to white. And lastly, we will override the width that we gave to all our inputs, and we will set it to 200 pixels instead of 300. Now, since we want to make our application slightly more interactive, we will also add a greet hover event where we will change the background color to medium violet red and we will change the cursor to a pointing hand which is called a pointer cool let's save this file and let's go back to our browser now if we simply refresh this page nothing happens and the reason is our browser remembers our previous style sheet now to fix it we will go to the settings and we will search for the cache. We will click on clear browsing history and we will only clear our cached images and files. So we will click on clear. We will return to our application. We will rerun it and boom, much, much nicer, excluding our font, but we will fix it right away. I must have had a typo of some sort. So let's test if everything still works. We will type Maria, we will press on greet and awesome. Everything works. Now I would like to add a bit more interaction to this input field. So first let's fix our fonts by specifying a font family rather than a font of Shanti. And we will of course copy this attribute and we will paste it in our second font indication. And we will then scroll below the input field and we will create an input field with a focus event where we will set the border to a solid line with a thickness of five pixels and a color of 00FFCE, which is pretty much the exact same turquoise we have in our logo. Now, I can't remember if Chrome is showing a weird default outline around a focused input. So in any case, we will still remove it with outline equals none. We will, of course, refresh our cache again. We will refresh the page and our font looks much, much better. 
Since I'm very picky, I will also edit the margin. And yay, I am finally happy. Now let's go ahead and test this application. So we will first greet myself. Hi, Maria. Great to see ya. Perfect. And because we are so inclusive, we will also greet Slenderman. Awesome. Long time no seen, buddy. And once we are happy with our app, we can go ahead and deploy it. But before we do so, we need to generate two additional files in the root folder. So we will go back to our terminal, we will exit our Flask application with Ctrl C, and then we can install a Python server called Green Unicorn. We will do this with pip install Gani corn. And once we have it installed, we will generate a brand new file, an empty one, with echo greater than proc file, where we absolutely have to have a capital P. So we will press on enter, we will return to our root folder, and we will quickly edit this brand new empty file. We can even do this with a notepad. We will type web colon space ganicorn space app colon and once again app where the first instance of app represents our app.py file so if you called your file main.py this first app instance would have to be main and additionally make sure that all your spaces match to what i showed you here otherwise it might not work okay we will save this file with ctrl s and we will move on to the requirements file. To generate this file, we will simply type pip freeze greater than requirements.txt and we will hit enter. We will go back to our root folder and we will open this newly generated file. And I can already tell we're gonna have some issues here. So the requirements of our application were automatically generated excluding the markup safe requirement. We will try to install it with pip, so we will type pip install, and we will paste the name of the module and hit enter. Now, as you guys can see, I already have it installed and I have it in the 2.0.1 version. We will return to our text file, and then instead of mark safe at file and whatever the URL is, we will replace it with mark safe equals equals the version. And this is how you fix it. We can then save this file. And now we are finally ready to deploy our application. So the first step is to upload the content of the root folder into a GitHub repository. I have called my repository greeting app underscore flask, and it contains all the lovely files we were just working on. And once everything is ready and loaded, we will navigate to heroku.com. And once we have created a free account, we can then navigate to our dashboard. You can do this through here just by pressing on dashboard. And we will, of course, click on the new button and we will create a new app. Now, in my case, I will call my app, say hello, 888, and I will click on create app. We will first go to the settings. We will scroll a little below and we will add a build pack. Now, in our case, that would be Python, of course, and we will save the changes. Then we will scroll all the way up. We will select deploy. We will connect our application through GitHub. Now, since I already connected my accounts, Heroku remembers it, but in your case, you will need to type your username and your password, and then we can move on with the repository name. Now, in my case, I saved it as greeting app underscore flask, we will then click on the search button. And once Heroku found our repository, we will click on connect. Cool. Now we can scroll all the way down to the manual deploy section. If you have a few branches, you can select whichever branch you need. I only have main, so I will simply click on deploy branch. Cool. So once you see this deploy to Heroku message, we can click on view. And we will, of course, still need to specify our hello route. And once we do that, we can see that our beautiful application is finally online. We have successfully deployed it and we can then copy this URL and share it with anybody we'd like. Good job. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please don't forget to give it a like, maybe leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, 
turn on the notification bell, or even better, share this video with your friends, with your coworkers, even with your grandma. Who knows? Maybe she's gonna enjoy it. <laughs> now, thanks again, and I will see you very soon.